Now I will give um, the microphone uh, to uh, um, Victoria. Victoria, please. Thank you, Oliveira. Thanks a lot. Uh, thank you for this uh, very, very nice and professional moderation. I have to say, Oliveira is a new member of, of our team and uh, we're very happy to have her with us. So um, I will proceed um, with the next block. Um, for those of you who haven't um, seen me yet, hello. For those of you who have been with us from the very beginning, um, I would just um, say we will start with the next block. Um, we have uh, many organizations that uh, we still <clears throat> they're still waiting to present themselves. Uh, at first, uh, we will hear the presentation of the Donaubüro or Danube office of Ulm and Neu-Ulm. Then um, the next uh, presenter will be uh, Center Eco Resource from Ukraine. Uh, after that, we will hear the presentation of the University of Puse. And uh, the last but not least, our Slovenian Third Age University in Ljubljana. So, and I will just... Um, I hope that all the presenters are with us. I see that Veronica is here, uh, Veronica Vira uh, from the Danube office of Ulm. Uh, this is um, an organization that is very important for, of, uh, for our city of Ulm uh, because Ulm is a Danube city and um, it's very important that also Danube activities take, take place in our city in Ulm and New, uh, Neu Ulm or New Ulm, I don't know exactly if you can translate that. Um, and um, most of you probably know the Danube Festival every two years. Uh, this year, sadly, it couldn't take place because of the Corona crisis, but we hope um, that in two years um, it can happen. And I will give the floor to Veronica and maybe you can also tell us about uh, the next Danube Festival that is planned. Veronica, the floor is yours. Thank you. Hello to everyone. Uh, I, I accept uh, you can hear me. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay. Perfect. So thanks for the nice introduction. Um, my name is Veronika Vira and as Victoria said, I'm working for the Danube office, like the organization that is organizing the Danube festival. And sadly this year not, but in 2022, we will hopefully see each other there in Ulm, New Ulm. I'd like to share my screen and uh, show you, give you just an idea of what we're working on and what we're doing. Um, or is it your colleague who'd like to share the screen? I don't mind actually. How you um, want? Uh, if you want to, if you want to manage the presentation yourself and okay. click, or if he can, uh, as you wish, as you wish. All right. So you can see my screen now, I hope. Yes. Yes. Okay, perfect. So the Danube office, Ulm New Ulm, as I said, um, we're a nonprofit limited company and we're owned by the cities of Ulm and New Ulm. So you can see a picture of our office, which is quite nice because it is in the city center and next to the um, Danube actually. And it gives us as well a good opportunity to have um, uh, smaller events in our office um, from time to time. I will come back to this later. Um, to give you an idea who is behind this office, we are seven core staff members and two um, representatives. And as the Danube office is financed by the cities of Ulm and New Ulm, we have as well two representatives um, of the um, cities of Ulm and New Ulm. You can see here Martin Bendel who spoke yesterday as well. He's um, like the head of our office and Ralf Seifert. And you can see the director of our office, Sebastian Riem and our team. <laughs> the Danube office is a clear contribution of the city's Ulm and New Ulm to the integration of Southeast Europe. And already our preamble um, yeah, fosters a clear commitment to Europe. And uh, what is our assignment actually? Um, the assignment and the idea of the Danube office is to foster, to strengthen international understanding, to foster development, cooperation, conservation, science, education, art and culture through the extension of context in initiating, coordinating and realization of actual partner projects. So as you can see, quite a waste, uh, a variety of topics we're 
working on. And um, to have a more better picture here, our office at a glance, like kind of the structure of our office, we're doing on the one hand projects, European projects, projects along the Danube mainly. Um, we're organizing the Danube festival on the other hand, and we have um, the unit where we say we're kind of a platform or stage because we organize events in our office. Um, and in the core of our, our Danube office actually is the network. We have um, big networks in all these um, units, topics we work in, and, and uh, this is actually the core because without, without our partners, we actually couldn't do our work. Um, I'd, I'd like to go into depth a little bit now of every one of these three units and give you just a short idea of what are our topics currently. Um, for the project agency, like the project work, uh, the idea is to initiate and realize partner pro projects, as I said, and um, the topics are diverse, but, but we have kind of um, main topics like sustainable mobility and nature conservation, environmental education. And then we have as well projects in further topics like human trafficking and sexual exploitation, education and youth projects, capacity building and training, and um, further on. Um, for the field of sustainable mobility and tourism, um, we were working in the Trans Danube Pearls project um, in the last three years, more or less, with partners along the Danube under the lead of the Environment Agency Austria. And um, currently, or just actually in June, we got the approval for a new um, Interact project with partners along the Danube, Trans Danube Travel Stories, which just started in July, actually. Um, and then we have a national funding to, um, for our projects. Um, these pictures should just give you an idea what we're doing in this project. Um, we uh, have a network or how to say a working group uh, from Ulm and New Ulm with experts from the tourism and mobility field um, that we meet currently um, regularly and work on a regional sustainable tourism and mobility plan and where we really implement measures to um, improve sustainable mobility and tourism in our region. But we as well work together in the EU projects with partners along the Danube. On the same topic, we organized a symposium during the last Danube festival, sustainable mobility along the Danube the last um, time then we, um, we, had, we could install a mobility manager for our, re uh, our region we implemented mobility manager trainings for tourism professionals, um, etc. For the field of environmental education, um, we were working on the EU project LENA, um, where the Danube office was in charge of implementing the pilot action Danube guides. And the idea of the Danube guides pilot action was to train people along the Danube um, to become Danube guides actually to conduct and um, to conduct excursions, guided tours um, for different target groups actually, could be children, could be uh, pupils, could be as well tourists of course. Um, and the idea is that the Danube guides communicate um, or communicate to the, to the people, to their target groups, the natural and cultural value of the Danube, uh, actually, of the Danube region. And what we've done during this pilot action or in the project, we, um, together with our partners who were um, contributing in this part, we elaborated common quality guidelines and a common curriculum. We had a um, uh, train the trainer course where we trained Danube guide trainers and these Danube guide trainers actually then went to their home countries where they trained Danube guides in their regions. And now we have um, quite a lot of Danube guides qualified um, who now are implementing excursions, etc. And we have a homepage too, so if you're interested, just have a look at it. 
Um, and for the moment, we are looking for further funding to strengthen the network and to go on with this idea of Danube guides. Um, now I'd like to go into the unit of the Danube festival. I expect that some of you have uh, been already in Ulm, New Ulm during the festival. So I will try to be short. <laughs> um, it's a festival over 10 days. Um, of course, the 10 Danube countries are in the core center and it is, we say, a unique festival. It's at the banks of the Danube. It is every two years and it's as well a showcase of our international Danube partnership. And uh, in the core center of our festival, it is encounter of artists and guests from along the Danube. Um, I'd like to give you just some uh, impressions. Um, during these 10 days, we really um, bring together all our partners, our network, and as well, all our, our partners in the region are contributing a lot to, um, yeah, to make this festival happen, actually. Um, we have a variety of projects. Like um, there is, for example, that you can see the Danube flags. This as well is already one project itself where um, flag, Danube flags are um, handmade by artists. Last time it was a Croatian and Serbian artist. And uh, these flags, for example, they are at the riverbanks. Um, last time we had choirs from, the Dan from different Danube countries um, performing performing um, their, their um, songs and they as well at the end had a common um, performance. And like, as you can see, there are a lot of small projects, part of this festival, where we always try to bring together people from uh, the Danube countries. Um, and um, yeah, as well we show, we have um, of course a lot of music, art, we have um, the market of the Danube festival with culinary specialities, handicraft from all Danube countries. And we have thematic tents where our partners present their organizations. Um, just to give you an idea. Um, we have um, networking events. We have a symposium like for the Danube uh, networkers. Usually this conference would have taken place as well during the Danube festival. We have the project Donafest kommt zu Ihnen. That's um, the idea to give the opportunity to people in retirement homes to kind of participate of the Danube festival as well where um, musicians come to the retirement homes and perform there, for example. We have the Danube Press Club um, in cooperation with the local newspaper. Uh, and as well here, the cooperation with Eloy, with Danube Networkers, who usually organize the breakfast on the Herdbrücke, which is really an exceptional and um, very special moment and event of the Danube Festival. For the um, platform and stage part, as I said, the idea is to introduce Danube related issues and subjects to the civil society of our region of Ulm and New Ulm and to um, provide knowledge transfer to draw interest on the Danube region and our neighbors um, yeah, to strengthen mutual understanding and identification of the civil society as part of the Danube region. And um, just to give you an idea here too, we have um, usually every autumn um, a band here from the Danube countries who performs in our office or actually in our, um, yeah, kind of our office, our event room. Then we have um, usually cooperation with the library of New Ulm where we have workshops with pupils um, on the Danube and we have panel discussions there. We have lectures um, as an example. And as I said, at the core is actually our networks, our partners. Um, and due to our variety of topics where we're working in, we have quite a big network. And just to give you an idea, only for the 
International Danube Festival, which takes place every two years, we have a, a number of partners who play an important role to make our festival um, the way it is. Very diverse, um, covering different topics and um, becoming really colorful and diverse. So thanks for your attention. I hope I didn't take didn't take me too long. And I'd like to invite all of you, of course, already now to save the date for the next International Danube Festival in two years only. But um, we're looking forward already to meet you there. Thanks a lot. All right. Wait a second, nobody heard me. So <laughs> now. I'm unmuted. Uh, as I said, thank you, Veronica, for your participation. Thank you for your presentation. And we hope that we're going to meet each other again at the Danube Festival in two years. And um, as Veronica already mentioned, we, um, as Eloy and Danube Networkers, organized the conference, so that this conference should, could have been um, taking place uh, within the framework of the Danube Festival, and as well as our Danube breakfast then you breach breakfast that we organize but sadly we have to uh, meet online but it's also it's also nice it's also uh, something different so we have um some new um some new impressions and uh, we gain some new knowledge as well so i would um i would invite right now to um our our some, someone new in our network uh, Zinovi Broite, uh, he is the director of the Center Eco Resource from Ukraine. Uh, this is the only organization uh, who works in the field of um, environment, in my environment protection that we have today. We're very glad to greet you here and please, the floor is yours. Uh, now you hear me. It's okay. With the yes, sound. we can hear you. Thank you. Uh, no, first of all, I very briefly will represent me uh, because even on the presentation, I uh, did not uh, suppose to fix your attention or redirect your attention from the tasks to uh, persons or institutions. Because uh, Ukraine, being the single country uh, from all 14 countries of Danube's uh, area, which has both uh, sources of uh, heads waterheads of uh, three main tributaries of Danube, Tisa, Prut, and Seret, and at the same chance, uh, same time in the um, uh, Danube Delta, uh, Odessa Oblast has the great part of the Delta of Danube. Therefore, uh, Ukraine has a unique position, uh, even throughout all uh, other Danube countries. At the same time, is, uh, this country faced, as you know now, the most uh, huge challenges uh, throws the political, uh, geographical, and uh, other issues. Therefore, uh, very briefly, uh, I represent a center which is situated uh, in the city of Chernivtsi, former Chernovitz, the capital of former historical land of Bukovina which is divided now between uh, Ukraine and uh, Romania. And therefore, uh, to uh, revitalize those uh, European possibilities which was uh, developed through the previous centuries, it was established exactly 20 years ago, the Euro region Upper Prut, which unites uh, both historical parts of Bukovina and uh, neighbor uh, oblast of Ukraine, uh, Romania and uh, Northern Moldova, with all of us uh, really to establish the new model of so-called eco euro region, which was supported uh, by the Bucharest summit of practically all the countries of the new strategy already uh, under initiative of the presidents of Ukraine, Romania and Moldova. It was uh, supported by the uh, summit uh, of all countries uh, in uh, April uh, 2001. At that time was established the Euro region, which tasks uh, now totally conform to uh, main uh, priorities, both of the European Green Deal and of new uh, 
uh, EU generation. It was proclaimed just only on 27 of May, as well as their um, reflection in the uh, Eastern Partnership uh, new tools of European Union and total in, um, international policy of European Union that was proclaimed already, proclaimed already in June. Therefore, let's go to the um, issues what it support, uh, proposed for your attention at the moment. Uh, therefore, I said I don't want to redirect your attention from the presentation. You can take uh, this is the presentation was done uh, by uh, Central Eco Resource as coordinated organization of this Euro region on the Bucharest last summer, exactly a year ago. Um, on the last uh, forum of Danube strategy in Bucharest. Uh, very briefly, I want to say that uh, taking in consideration the main ideas of this event, uh, this is mainly social, economic, uh, social, uh, cultural aspects of collaboration of Danube countries. I have to say that Bukovina was one of the most examples of the, I can say even so, it was the first um, labor to elaborate the nowadays principles of the Europe of regions. <clears throat> it's not my opinion, this is European. Uh, Zinovi, I'm sorry, can I interrupt you a little bit? Um, just to make sure, should we share your presentation right now? Uh, or later? I, just I just let show, us know. Uh, I send it to you or I shoot it uh, alone? Uh, yeah, we, we can share it for you, no problem, because... Um, yeah, I don't, it has 66 uh, oh. <laughs> slides. Therefore, okay. I, I suppose that you can select alone what is most interesting. It's uh, inf informationally enough, but uh, I don't know exactly which of them are of great interest, because I said that we work mainly on the <clears throat> transport energy, <clears throat> environmental issues concern floods prevention waste management and so on therefore it's not so i, I seen uh, yesterday it's not uh, the focal topics of this forum of this uh, event <clears throat> therefore i suppose that participants can alone so we will publish it on our website because it will be very overhead uh, overload Okay. Uh, I only uh, want, if you will uh, be interested now, I can send uh, additionally, uh, first of all, uh, uh, it was done a um, special review of the opportunities of Green uh, Deal, uh, European Green Deal, and it was a publication which is based on the um, publication in New York, New York Times in January this year, that Europe, European continent is overheated in comparison to any, th this is the maps in English version, what I can give you the link. Uh, it's shown that uh, on the map of all uh, heating you know, temperatures uh, on the surface of our Earth, the um, European continent is most overheating uh, in comparison with other continents. I don't take into consideration only the Arctic and Antarctic zones. The, there is the horrible things. And on the other hand, in the, uh, uh, around the geographical center of European continent, what we have uh, in Carpathians near the border with Romania and Hungary on Tisa River, uh, the main tributary of Danube, the longest tributary of Danube. Uh, we have the additional overheating of the central part of the Europe. It includes Ukraine, Moldova, Belarus, part of Russia, and uh, neighbor countries from European Union, from Poland till, uh, till uh, Romania. Uh, therefore, uh, answering th these challenges, we should look not only into traditional uh, way of our collaboration. I have a, approximately yeah, 30 years experience work together with the European Union and with NATO even. Uh, there was step-by-step -step improvement and uh, opportunities for such step-by-step uh, uh, -step going for different countries are both starting conditions and uh, other conditions are crucially different. 
And uh, at the moment, it seems to me that we have a parallel uh, reality, I can say, when in parallel to those uh, continuation of this way, we have uh, principal changings of our understanding of energy, all cycle of producing, transporting, uh, consumption and saving, just the same for transport systems, because we need crucially this commissioner uh, valian of transport for, uh, of transport of european union she proclaimed from the first day of european grill deal our general task is to move uh, cargo uh, flows from outer roads to rails and waterways this uh, gives special challenges for the danube countries because including this geographical center of European continent and practically the main part of this overheating zone of European continent, we need to look in parallel how better to improve, to continue those objectives, those tasks what we've done before and how we should introduce the new approaches, principally new approaches, which uh, you see, in my opinion, COVID, it's only um, the upper part, uh, part of the iceberg of the problems what we practically have uh, faced now. And uh, Green Deal and this new generation of Europe, the new plan of uh, outcoming of, from Corona and coming to the new development of the continent, uh, those challenges gives us uh, a lot of opportunities but very huge uh, necessary to change our mind therefore maybe or you can ask something or i will give you now in chat uh, two last uh, links to the to to, to the public there are two publications what i said this is the review of the problems which was published in March, and uh, at the same time uh, ukrainian government established a special working group where uh, I am also a member, it's include all the key ministries, institutions and so on. And how is formulate this working group on the first meeting, formulate the vision of Ukraine for participating in this uh, huge objectives realization of European Union. I will give this uh, links now in a few minutes. And now if you have any questions, because I said, if I will start to nominate all the issues, all the problems, you have to understand, uh, when the Euro region was established 20 years ago, in a year after a uh, huge discussion by prime ministers of Ukraine and Romania and few summits, Ukrainian, Romanian, Moldavian, uh, we received from the governments of Moldova and uh, you, uh, from Ukraine and Moldova a special uh, status of pilot for this Euro region to elaborate uh, the new mechanism for transfrontier cooperation in very wide sense, sense as uh, key tools both for European integration and uh, for um, uh, territorial development in our countries. And I can say now at the moment that uh, practically all these uh, tasks uh, how they were uh, formulated 20 years ago and uh, how they uh, more or less was realized through those years and uh, look uh, for today in the framework of these uh, challenges, what I said, of uh, Green Deal, of uh, European New Generation, of COVID. Uh, it seems to me it will be interesting now to uh, investigate them commonly and elaborate those next steps what we can uh, really realize together using Danube territorial, uh, European, uh, trans-European, I've forgotten, Danube program and uh, other tools with foreseen with the new uh, instrument of uh, how it was formulated on the 2nd of June, 
a new instrument of development, uh, neighborhood and cooperation. Now I thank you for your attention and your patience. And if you have any questions, I can clarify. And I will now use the next time to send you these two links to the governmental um, initiative and to the last publication. Thanks a lot. It was a very, very interesting, in, interesting insight because this prob, uh, problem is a global problem. It concerns all of us. So I think it's a, also a very, very important contribution for, for our conference. Thanks a lot. Uh, we uh, sent you the participants list, as I said, and you, uh, if you're interested in this topic or want to ask a question, you can contact um, Mr. Broide uh, directly or uh, he will share, you can also put the links in chat and you can go to the page directly. We will also share the presentation on our website so you can access it anytime and uh, also can ask questions through the contact details as well. Uh, we will go further with um, our dear partner, um, also member of Danet um, University of Ruse, you probably, if you have been in the workshop six yesterday, you probably got to know the award-winning project Bread Connex that uh, our uh, dear partner Emilia Vilikova presented to us. Uh, she is a vice president of Danet and she will present for us uh, University of Ruse. Um, thank you, Emily, for your presentation and uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Dear colleagues, um, because I presented a very interesting project which was coordinated by Eloy and uh, Mrs. Carmen Stadelhofer in the working group six, and uh, maybe because uh, maybe all these uh, presentations will be on the website, so you can uh, learn much more from this uh, about these projects over there. Now I'll present just the uh, scientific part of the university and project activities because uh, all of uh, these uh, activities are too much, too many, with um, many participants, so I would like to be in time. The University of Russie, the name uh, is Angel Kanchev. This is uh, a town on the border of the river Danube. 65 kilometers from uh, Bucharest, 300 from uh, Sofia, our capital is Sofia, it is Bulgaria. Faculties of our universities are uh, four faculties for engineers, agriculture, mechanical, electrical and transport, business management, faculty that I'm working uh, is uh, natural science and education, also law studies, public health, and branches in, two, in three towns uh, on the river Danube, Silistar, Razgrad, and Vidin. I will not uh, read all these undergraduate programs. If uh, somebody is interested, uh, can uh, read all this on the website. But uh, for my faculty, I'd like to remark that we have got computer engineering, uh, computer sciences, informatics in business, mathematics and informatics, also financial mathematics, primary school, teacher education. There are no, many graduate programs uh, in all these uh, areas. Generally, we have got about 28 uh, scientific areas and uh, PhD programs that I, uh, which are accredited 43. The University of Russia is science and research oriented and it explains why teaching in the time coronavirus was quickly transferred online. Online lectures with students from Poland, Austria, Germany, and others in the period of Corona pandemic conducted by lectures of Russian University 
are in examples of applying the concept of adapting educational system to the digital generation. The university has developed its own teaching platform, e-learning, which was uh, um, uh, applied uh, also in East Asia uh, in more than 300 universities and also about 150 universities in Europe. Also, we organize a center of education of third age after uh, some years working, uh, jointly working with uh, Mrs. Carmen Stadelhofer, uh, Eloy and Zaviv in Ulm, Germany. At the beginning, we had no any experience. This is, uh, this, our university is only one which is working very hard in the education and training, uh, in training of uh, elderly people in Russia region. Research is about, supported, for example, by setting up centers of the excellence, uh, excellence in uh, ICT, and implementation of projects uh, such as digitalization of the economy in the environment of big data, uh, also, is, uh, uh, the university is coordinator of many joint projects on the Erasmus Plus program with universities from European and Asian countries. In the field of higher education, vocational education, training, adult education and youth. The concept of innovative educational technologies of the university aimed at adapting the educational system to the digital generation is used in 74 universities in 35 European countries. These are examples of uh, presentations of different uh, project results and also exhibition of uh, uh, students' research. We have got four journals. One of them, Entrepreneurship and Innovation, is uh, referred in the Web of Science and Scopus. Other Balkan Agriculture, Information, Communication and Control Systems and Technologies, and Pedagogical News. Also, Web of Science and Scopus is uh, for uh, Comp uh, Systech. Uh, which is an international conference with participants from all over the world. We organize many kinds of conferences like uh, International Conference Sustainable Development of the Danube region and in, in uh, connections between regions with presidents of Bulgaria, uh, Austria and Romania. These are different conferences and here you can see on my on the left part of the presentation down, this is uh, Danube uh, lectures, which uh, was uh, final uh, Danube lectures uh, project in uh, Donau Bureau. Uh, what? I'm sorry. Do not, nothing to do with you. It was project of the Nabra, Danub lectures, online lectures with students and elderly people. These are also big conferences and uh, offices. The University of Russia is member of the European University Association, International Association of Cross-Cultural competences and management, association of schools of social work, coordination, coordinator of several large-scale thematic networks in ICT, member of CIPUS network, co-founder of the Danube Networkers for Europe, the NET. Danube Rector's Conference. Also, Angela Merkel is uh, Dr. Honoris Causa of our university. The University of Russia has been a partner in many different projects under the program Interact, Temples, Leonardo da Vinci, Pact of Stability, Erasmus, of course, 
and many other. Here I remark uh, I remark some projects of the university between 2008 to 2020. And if somebody is interested, can find some information about them. BBE, Building Bridges for Europe, is a Erasmus Plus project with uh, Eloy from Germany. Fair guidance with uh, Tulenberg. European CIPUS network with 64 uh, participants from European universities and other. Some international projects with Danet were presented in workshop six on this conference, Intangible Cultural Heritage is a Society Kit for European Awareness by myself, Emilia Velikova. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Emilia. It was a very interesting presentation. I have to mention that the University of Ruse has been a very reliable partner of Eloy and of the Danube Networkers. We appreciate your work. Um, so our last, and as I said, but not least um, presentation, um, it will be of the Slovenian Third Age University. And Dr. Dojane Findeisen, head of the Institute for Research and Development of Education, and also uh, our dear partner and uh, board member of Danet, uh, will present this institution. You had the chance uh, to listen to uh, Dr. Dojane Findeisen um, in a workshop one. Um, the topic was um, digitalization and digital learning. So, um, Dushana, the floor is yours. Uh, please present. Dushana, we cannot hear you. You're still muted. Is that okay now? Yes, yes. Better. Okay. Yep. Well, uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, listening to you and being a little bit inspired, not a little bit, but uh, quite a lot by Veronica. Um, I, I, I have changed the topic of my presentation. It's not going to be the huge Third Age University, which is Slovenia Third Age University, which is uh, um, presently an organization with 52 Slovenian universities, uh, third age universities all over the country. And uh, there's so much uh, going on in these different, uh, <coughs> shall we say, departments. Um, so I won't be speaking about the whole third, third age university and in that the last moment I have changed my presentation into to something else. And in fact, so this is going to be connected what's going on in, uh, in Ulam and our cooperation with, with Ulam. Uh, we have been um, in uh, very close uh, contacts uh, since the first, um, the first conference, which was uh, about older people's productivity. And it was a world conference in 1995. So there's a long <laughs> and close uh, cooperation with um, Carmen in the first place and all other colleagues who are uh, involved in the field of andragogy and uh, adult education and older adult education. So, um, <clears throat> sorry, uh, yeah. Uh, so I have changed my presentation and I have taken one of the presentations which was uh, um, meant to be presented in Ulam by our colleague. She's an architect. She's a mentor of the study group which is titled uh, 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 Streets, uh, uh, Squares and Buildings around, uh, around Us. 
so with this is a study group dealing with um, <clears throat> urbanism architecture and urbanism uh, analyzing what's going on in the urbanization processes in in Ljubljana and so on and since uh, we somehow we are not partners but we joined uh, we helped with the project Brecht Connects uh, we um, uh, uh, made a combination of these uh, studies of uh, urbanism and architecture with community development and uh, so the stories of the old city of, Ljub of Ljubljana and uh, the topic of uh, the topic of bread. Um, yeah, I'll be talking very, I hope, very briefly about the history of bread projects at Slovenian Third Age University whenever we join a, a European project as partners or even if not, not as partners. Um, we, we have a, already a long history uh, behind us in the, in the topic because the Slovenian Third Age University has been in existence since 1984. Um, a long time with very diverse, diverse activities. Um, yeah, I'll be also talking about projects recognizing, sharing and transmitting architectural heritage of the city of Ljubljana. And uh, finally, um, I'll be going into the topic of how can bread baking workshops fit into an architectural study program. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, as I said, uh, there, there has been a long history, bread history, shall we say, at Slovenian Third Age University. Um, we, uh, we have had um, public exhibitions uh, and bread was portrayed, shall we say, in ceramics. Um, and this was done by the study group of ceramics. This is a study group which is engaged in socially engaged uh, art. Um, and uh, they quite often, they take a topic which is a social issue. Um, for example, they, they, they chose the topic of migrations and migrants and refugees when this was the uh, issue, the social issue number one in our environment, in international environment. So uh, the second uh, activity was the so-called painters brush and bread. So uh, the painting groups were dealing with uh, bread and uh, there was a um, bilingual catalog which was published um, and um, we also presented um, a publication which was done by the group of journalists or students studying journalism it was the past and present and uh, this bread in the past and present was uh, uh, <coughs> developed as a, a set of interviews. And bread was uh, studied from the sociological, psychological, mm -hmm. historical, um, also political, if you want, uh, <coughs> uh, aspect. Um, and finally, uh, we uh, set up this so-called barn of crunchy bread and stories of the old city. And it was really about community development, bringing generations together, discovering the memories of the city, understanding uh, the architectural style of the buildings, talking about uh, the, uh, the fact that the old city, like in many other European countries, is becoming a, a mono-functional place and uh, which was which is more and more uh, meant for uh, meeting the needs of the tourists and you know whenever a part of the town becomes mono-functional it's really uh, making uh, this part of the town uh, there's a danger of course um, of making this part of the town dead. It's really 
you know, we should be careful in, in all our cities as to preserve the different functions of the <coughs> urban, urban space. So let me just give you uh, an illustration of this uh, uh, public uh, <coughs> pottery uh, ex exhibition. So, uh, no, they are different. These are different uh, results or products of this uh, uh, study, study group, the study group of ceramics. Um, and uh, yeah, and there was also some theory behind which was developed and presented to the public. So this was a very good public event because we think that older adult education uh, or older people should have access to the public sphere and they should be, um, they should do things that are done in the way that uh, suits also other generations and is inspirational for other generations. So this is a <clears throat> picture from one of the exhibitions. This is a picture from the uh, painter's brush I was talking about, uh, the catalog dealing again with bread and some theory of uh, the importance, symbolic importance of bread in our lives and so on. Um, this was the publication which was prepared by the group of journalists, Bread in the Past and Present. It's a bilingual, uh, bilingual publication. And I think it was presented um, two years ago in, um, uh, at the conference in, in Ulam. So this is uh, a part of this catalog. In fact, uh, we, I got uh, at, at, uh, at some moment, I, I participated in, the, uh, in, in a big event bringing uh, together um, scientists and also politicians. And I was moderating a, a group, the, the title of the event was Forum 21 or some, something like that at, uh, uh, at Bled, which is a uh, nice lake in, in Slovenia and a nice place too. And uh, <clears throat> I was inspired by, um, uh, by, by, uh, uh, by a presentation of a project which was done, I think, by the European Commission uh, in involving a photographer uh, going to one of the uh, Russian Federation, ex-Russian Federation countries and uh, <clears throat> making pictures of older people, um, people who were I don't know, from rural area and urban area and so on. And then they were talking about how they felt about their old age and what they would like about their old, old age, what they would like to, to change. And I remember one of the uh, doctors, medical doctors, who said, I hope someday older intellectuals, shall we say, or older people in general will be allowed to work. And I was so really, you know, shattered, shall I say, so touched by this story that uh, we transposed this idea of uh, portraits to the topic of, of, uh, of bread which was that, as I said, which was dealt with, was from the sociological, uh, political, historical, psychological aspect and so on. Um, and uh, of course, whatever we do at Slovenian 38 University is accompanied by huge campaigning. And uh, this group of journalists is uh, present uh, in, a, one of our national dailies and they run a, a page which is called 60 plus and some of the stories were also published uh, published there um, and also they were presented in national radio programs and so on um, yeah so 
part of this uh, bread story at Slovenian Sargent University was also the training in, uh, in, in Sofia. But we wanted to, to go away uh, from what inspired us here. We were not really partners, you know, so we had probably a little bit more um, freedom. Uh, and so we, as I said, we combined bread and memories of the town and urbanization and whatever, whatever you want. And uh, this became a part of the community development. And uh, yeah, so <coughs> this is a part of this, uh, I think, bread connects. Uh, um, bread connects uh, project. Uh, you will you remember give a sign of friendship and so on so um, we somehow participated in, in this uh, in this project um, so this this was one of the projects which was uh, connected only with uh, uh, with bread but it was a kind of mixture but uh, we have been uh, collaborating uh, with Ulam for a very long time. And uh, there we have developed uh, from a type of this co cooperation, we have developed different uh, projects um, focused on what we call exploratory learning or expensive learning. And uh, we, also provided this theoretical background and there were um, articles published in uh, scientific journals and so on. So at this moment there are several projects um, in, at Slovenia Third Age University meant for recognizing, sharing, uh, and transmitting tangible and intangible cultural her heritage of the city of Ljubljana. In one of these projects, which you will remember, is um, it was called Personal Town Tours. Um, we, of course, we did whatever was um, required uh, within the project, but we continued and continued, and our students published personal town tours and developed me uh, methodology for discovering the town and so on. So uh, their, their itineraries and their memories connected with uh, different, uh, shall we say, public places in the town um, uh, were presented. Um, yes, and from one project, this is what we call expensive learning, from one project, uh, there are other projects coming, one of the projects which was uh, done in 19, story in 2015 um, dealt with women and their, uh, how they are represented in the names of Ljubljana's street. And from there we started studying the gender relationships in towns because we discovered that out of, uh, uh, out of uh, shall we say, uh, 1623 Slovenian uh, streets in Ljubljana, only 48 were named after women and uh, more than 20 women out of 48 were war uh, heroines. No, so no, no women who are uh, uh, scientists or artists and so on. And those towns are at the edge of the, of the, mostly at the edge of the, of the town. And some of them are even in the industrial zone and so on and so on. So this is a huge, it, it's a revealing, revealing project which reveals the re relationships of power in the town. Um, yeah, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> So this is one, this is supposed to be one of the, of the streets named after a famous uh, a woman. Uh, yes, um, uh, all the knowledge gained in this uh, study group is 
all the time transmitted to other generations. And this is an example of an international project. We were approached, uh, meant for, for school children, and we were approached by the authors of this project after, uh, public, after a radio, radio program. So we developed the whole program for this young um, school children. Um, sorry. So you can see this fruitful <laughs> intergenerational uh, cooperation, shall we say. Um, yeah, I'm not going into, into this. And uh, <clears throat> no, we, we are, uh, right now we are uh, running several small scale projects uh, and uh, <clears throat> they are meant to slow down the degrading of the urban, uh, of the urban places of the, of the town. Here's one of the examples how the town was transformed, but this was a bad uh, tra transformation. And uh, all this research is done by, by our, our students. Let me just give you some <laughs> examples very, very quickly. <clears throat> <clears throat> and some local, some events in the local community um, are being <clears throat> set up. So this is one of our local partners. Uh, <clears throat> he is an architect, but he is dealing with bread. And we also had a, a <clears throat> radio program program with him. So some pictures from uh, from the training, and this is it. Thank you very much for your attention. It's very difficult to to transpose. Uh, you know, to talk about projects because projects are based, uh, also based on our cognitive abilities, of course, and cognitive learning, but they are based on face-to-face -face contact and they are based also on emotions. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very, very much, Toshana. It was very, very interesting. We continued the topic of bread that we started yesterday in our conference. Really? And I think it was, uh, yeah, with the, with the project uh, of, uh, with the workshop six, the Bread Connects project, and then you give us some insight about your projects. And I think it was a great conclusion that um, the projects are based on face-to-face -face contact. And we hope that soon we can meet each other in person, that those times are over, and that we can continue our cooperation not only uh, by uh, internet or Zoom or any other platforms, but also see each other because this is um, a very nice uh, opportunity and we we'll learn a lot, but this is of course not enough, but we have to use what we get. So thanks a lot. I thank all of you who contributed today, many very interesting organization, uh, interesting inputs, um, I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, thank you for uh, presenting, dear contributors, dear organizations, dear friends. Thank you for presenting your organizations, for taking your time to participate in our conference. And uh, with these uh, with these words, I close the um, presentations part. And we cannot wait to see you at our social evening. Thanks to all of you who uh, made it happen to all the contributors, to our partners, um, to our technical support. Uh, Simon is there who moderated the session technically. Hello. Thanks to all of the team um, of um, special thanks uh, to Carmen Stadelhofer, uh, our president, who is a big inspiration to us, uh, yeah. to all the partners. Thanks, thanks a lot to participants um, and we will see each other at our social evening. We prepared something special for you, especially for those who um, actively participated in the Codonec project. Uh, we will find out who won prizes and um, 
we will um, get together for this virtual social evening and hopefully we will see uh, maybe, who knows, maybe at the end of the year, maybe next year, we'll see each other in person again. Thank you, dear friends. See you soon. Bye-bye.